launching here today from the Port Maitland East Park. And it is a very foggy day. There it is, Mohawk Island, off in the distance. Absolutely beautiful water here. I love it when it's big, calm, and smooth like this. As you approach the lighthouse, you can just smell the feces from all the birds. Very appealing. I swear it's not my sun protection here. It's the birds, I swear. Come on, look at them, they're all over there. I have but one goal in this journey today, not to get pooped on. Let's get into why the Mohawk Island Lighthouse was constructed. In the early 1800s, the Welland Canal was opened, which allowed for boats to go from Lake Ontario to Lake Erie finally. Aware that the Port Maitland would soon become a bustling port, the Board of Works for the Province of Canada issued a plea for a lighthouse on Mohawk Island, which is five kilometers from the Grand River on Lake Erie. The lighthouse was needed because a great deal of property had already been lost to the dangerous shallow shoal that Mohawk Island is a part of. Vandals and weather have wreaked havoc on this structure, but it was an 18 meter, 60 foot tall lighthouse with a keeper's residence, all made out of stone from the quarry in Kingston. The residence consisted of a bedroom, a sitting room, and a kitchen. John Burgess was hired as the first lighthouse keeper in 1848. The lighthouse featured a 10 light system that rotated by a rate suspended in the tower. Every few hours, John would have to climb the six flights of stairs and wind up the weight. One evening though, the revolving mechanism failed and this forced Burgess and his son to use a blanket to produce the light's proper flashing pattern well into the night to prevent any accidents from happening. We'll jump to the last lighthouse keeper, Richard Foster. By 1929, an unmanned light was installed during the winter months, which gave Richard Foster the winters off. In December 1932, Richard installed the winter light like he had been doing the past few years and started to row with his son across the shore, a 1.5 mile journey. After a few days, his family and friends back on shore had noticed that the winter light had been on, but they hadn't seen Richard come to shore yet, and they got worried. They contacted the Ontario Provincial Police and together they started looking for him. However, the 15 foot high waves filled with the slush and ice flows prevented the mass search effort. 16 days later though, on December 31st, they found the two bodies frozen on the shore of Port Abano. After that tragedy, a permanent unmanned light was installed and the island was never to have another residence again.